And, alright, guys, welcome. This is going to be the day two of the iLeague LAN that's going on. I'm Egad, joining me here is going to be Ryan Noob, and we're going to have ourselves a stats man, too. That's going to be pretty good from uh, LPQ on the stats there. And How are you doing, Ryan? I'm doing great. <laughs> it's an interesting match we have here. It is an interesting match. VGP, or VG Gaming Potential, taking on Team Malaysia. I'm just going to adjust the sounds a little bit so we don't uh, kill anybody's ears. And uh, yeah, Vici Gaming had an interesting game against LGD. You can see on the replay they had a pretty close game there. While well, Malaysia, they had a close second game against Newbie, but ended up getting loosed out, or losing out as Newbie made a, a fantastic 0-7 zero to se zero seven comeback. So we'll see what happens here. Statsman gave us a little bit of uh, insight onto the picks and bans uh, for the Vici side. And they like playing some unorthodox picks, so we'll see if those come out. But the first four bands to fly on through are going to be the Axe, the Undying, the Visage, and then maybe we'll see an IO get banned away. Who knows? Yeah. This is going to be the first time in a while that uh, IO hasn't been banned that I've been watching. I watched a lot of the Summit, and IO was banned in every game. So that'd be a nice change of pace. I'm a, I'm a huge fan of IO. Yeah, well, it's it's also a Chen thing, too. Like, Chen is still pretty big. Like, Puppy gave us a big effect of that. It was always banned against him. The Chinese scene hasn't seen much of it played besides, like, Chuan. And, oh, there's another uh, thing that LPQ points out is that Winter Wyvern is one of the favorites for VGP to pick up, and they'll take it away. So a little bit of research done there. Yeah, definitely a really smart ban by them. 4-0 uh, with that hero, and they're very new added to captain's mode, so Malaysia banning it out. They don't know much about it, and... Of course, if you don't know much about it, you <laughs> should definitely ban it out in the first phase versus VG. I would not be surprised if we saw a gyrocopter first pick. That happened a lot in the last games yesterday. So, there it is. Okay. <laughs> it's That's literally just the standard now. It's just go gyrocopter, shadow fiend, and then pick a support. The queen of pain can still come out to combat the shadow fiend. I mean, this is this is literally just become 6.84. Like, just massive get mid-game and then just destroy. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I saw these picks yesterday uh, whenever I was going to bed. Gyrocopter first pick and then followed up with a Shadow Fiend plus one support. <laughs> it's it's so um, dumb. <laughs> it's so good though. <laughs> it's it's great and this is this is a really fun meta to watch. Uh, a lot of kills. Uh, 6.04C nerfed it a little bit, but still, really, really enthusi. The, the enthusiasm has been put on the kills and it's great to watch. Great as a spectator. Yeah, we saw some Tusk yesterday. Got some pleasure to see that. That was that was nice. That was for Canada Cup, but. Uh, but it's still fun to see him come out every now and then. So we'll see what Vici have in terms of unorthodox picks after this Clockwork comes in. And Clockwork's another thing that was banned away. Lo uh, the Alliance side ended up losing that one against uh, Admiral Bulldog. But when he did get it, they destroyed. And I mean, they went 2 0, and they're still looking to go into the winner's day. The schedule for today is going to be loser's bracket, two winner's bracket, then loser's bracket, I believe, from what I had. And uh, we're only doing the first best of three, and Zyklops is going to be coming in for the next set, and then I believe Lysander's closing off the night, so we're switching around casters, so the stream will be going down at intermittent points, but that's beyond the su beyond the point. I almost said beyond the summit. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, uh, so Ancient Apparition, Earthshaker, do we see a Lion Band, do we see some more support hate? This this patch is really about supports, like, it's crazy. Gyrocopter, uh, one, the first pick from Vici, and I saw this yesterday, the bands are really focused on keeping the Gyrocopter alive. Uh, not so much with the Undying, as he's pretty good against that, but the Axe and the AA are very good against Gyro. And if you take Gyro out of a fight with an AA Blast, uh, he can't Five Satanic, seconds, he can't Lifesteal at all. Uh, so he'll go down pretty quick, and uh, same with the Axe, if you call him, he won't, he won't be able to do his full time. shebang. So it's, uh, it's really nice to see those bands uh, just focusing on the Gyro pick. Mm -hmm. Like, it, it seems that Gyro controls this meta right now. He's turned into the Jug and the Troll, but he's better. <laughs> he's got <laughs> he's got better range, he's going to be able to flat cannon, yada yada. There's Alina Ban, uh, something that maybe absolutely destroyed uh, with against VG gaming potential. So, don't want to deal with that against Malaysia. And Mushi, I believe, is going to be playing mid again this time. He played Storm Spirit yesterday against Newbie, and he almost carried the game single-handedly, but just couldn't do it because everybody else is so far behind. He kind of he kind of filled the SF roll out, but uh, couldn't couldn't do it. So last ban. What do you think? Support core? Do we see any more core hate? Well, they've already get, they've already picked up one support, and they've got the next pick. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Leshrac pick up from him uh, as the second support. It's not too common. Maybe even a carry actually. Uh, with the Rubik, you always want to pick okay. something like oh, hey, there it is. The Queen of Pain. <laughs> yeah. Oh, the Queen of Pain was weird, but the Leshrac pick up right right after that. Yeah. A lot uh, so, of the. I'm so confused. Is that going to be a support or a carry? I mean, I guess they it can should go be. Way. It should be one position. I believe they'll put it in a tri lane, go for aggressive, and just dominate like that. Like they should be able to snipe out the gyro's tri lane as well. And I mean, Lesh doesn't lose too much, but 
if they can lump the spells enough, like get an SD. Shadow Demon Leshrac is pretty stupidly strong. <laughs> yeah. Usually you don't want to pick up Shadow Demon with Rubik, but we'll see what they want to do. Um, so with with this uh, Leshrac pick, I wonder if they're gonna go aggressive Charlene and then pick something versus the Clockwork. Hmm. The, the, that, that could leave them in a in a really good drafting spot. Well, the thing about the aggressive Charlene, like if if they want to do three versus three, they still can. And like going against the Clockwork, like he he just plays safe. He'll just sit back and let the Rocket Flare go, and I don't know. But they pick up the Lion, and I mean that's just pretty atypical stuff with the Gyro. If you can snag up a Lion, so you get Finger, you get lots of damage, and you're just gonna have a good time. So next pick for Malaysia, one of the supports. Yeah, really good pickup for Lishrak, just fingering him down. Uh, that'll usually get him past half HP. And once he's down that far, he basically just has to turn tail. And you have to be in the center of the fight for to be useful with Lishrak. Ooh, they go for the Prophet. Okay. So that'll be their off lane. So we still need the either one position or the support. And it's funny because whenever the Chinese teams play against Alliance, they end up banning nature's profit away it was it was the first thing that alliance did uh, hap had happened to them in their first match so uh malaysia picking that one up and i mean we're gonna see potentially a lot of rat to yep. come out Ten seconds remaining. so <clears throat> looking at the draft so far it looks like it'll be an offlane nature's profit uh they won't i don't think they'll be doing the uh the safe 1v1 nature's profit versus clockwork i've seen it a couple of times in na dota but not really anything uh in any other areas <laughs> okay so yeah, the, the Nature's Prophet will be able to uh, pull the Creep Wave and the Clockwork. Well, he does have the Cogs, and he's generally safe. Uh, Nature's Prophet usually gets more out of the lane, and a Bounty Hunter pick yeah. from Vici Gaming. This apparently isn't too uncommon from Vici. They, they like going for the Bounty Hunter, so he'll be roaming around. There's no Chen for him to really kind of snipe out, but the track's going to be super useful against the Prophet. Uh, but it's going to be useful against everybody. The extra gold, too. We saw earlier in some NA Dota today with... Uh, Narvi 2 versus Summer's Rift. They were able to utilize that one for uh, Jimmy Demon. He was playing that one pretty well. Yeah, I haven't seen too much of Bounty Hunter support besides the last few days. Like the Summit, they picked it versus Chen a lot, but there's no jungler for Team Malaysia. Nature's Prophet, I mean, can di dip into the jungle, but normally an offlaner, roaming ganker. Remaining. Huh. It's really interesting to pick up a Bounty Hunter fourth pick like this, even though you said. As you said, it, it is one of their stronger picks, one of their more common picks. An uncommon common pick for them. <laughs> <laughs> so, Viper's gone, next fan, not sure what they're going to go for, but we need to see what their mid lane is going to be to combat the SF. With the Viper and, you know, the Queen of Pain gone, Storm Spirit still a very viable option. Uh, haven't seen a Razor in a long time, and they ban away the Sky Earth Mage, okay. Radiant so, kind of seeing that the Lesh is going to be the one roll for Malaysia right now. Yeah, that's what Vici are thinking, definitely. Uh, good ban by the Le of the Lesh. Uh, the nukes are just really strong in the silence, really good versus Clockwork. Uh, just e easy to zone the Clockwork with a uh, easy roaming Rubik with a Trion or Nature's Prophet TPing in. I feel like that'll that would uh, that would help their lanes way too much. <laughs> yeah, it would. Jeez, so we got a couple seconds left. The IO still on the board. I, like, I just feel so weird not seeing an IO picked up. Like, Vici potential could pick that up and just pair it with the gyro and be like the ultimate draft. But oh, Juggernaut comes out. So this is going to be a support Lesh. Okay. Interesting. I like it. It's a uh, Juggernaut's old, really strong versus gyro. You can't really hit back. Um, yeah. Invoker picked up by Vici last. All right, so some really two strong drafts. I like them. Yeah, this is gonna be a good game. I want to see some Ags Invoker. Uh, we got to see Relic play some Invoker too. He got like refresher Ags. He just spammed out spells like crazy. And uh, yeah, this is gonna be Lin's Invoker too. So that's gonna be something to behold. Kachik Imba is gonna play the last track like yesterday. Kachik Imba, he was struggling super hard against Newbie. He just couldn't stay alive to save his life. So yeah, this is this is gonna be a tough game. I think Future Potential have. The potential to actually take the win over Malaysia. Malaysia being the favorites, having the stack lineup that they do have. So this is a, a good time for the underdogs to come out. But all right, we're loaded in. Let me pop up the last hits and let's see how this goes. Any aggressive one versus ones, but Malaysia the intros. Kyxy playing the Juggernaut. Mushi on his Shadow Fiend for the mid. Kachik Imma playing the Leshrac. Johnny on his Rubik. And then sitting in base is Ohio, scouting out with the Triants on the Nature's Prophet. And how about the VGP side, Ryan? We got 
XLL playing the gyro. Oops. Oops. Had dog fights playing the bounty hunter. That's what we expect to see a lot of. <laughs> James on the lion, Lin on the invoker, and Yang on the offlane clockwork. Cool. So I I'm looking to see if they want to like snipe a, a try versus try, but I I, I feel like I'm not going to get my wish. Sadly, just high aggressive lanes are what I like to see, and Yang's going to be left to fend for himself. And they don't see anybody trying to invade either. They were they were kind of hoping for I guess a one versus one. But VGP want nothing to do with that radiance out of the jungle, and maybe for the rune we'll see the fight. To yeah, they just seem to be contesting the bottom rune. This is not something you see every day from the dire side. It's really hard to contest the runes, as they don't have the double hill like Radiant does. Mm, and even dogfights just scouting out with the shadow walk, and there you go. If you don't know who we are, I'm Egi Cass. Joining me is Ryan Noob, WFX, and then on the stats is LPQ. So you've got a nice little team set up for today to lessen the burden that I presented yesterday with two best of threes in a row. But, uh, alright, split the bounties, nothing crazy. And no first bloods. What, what, VG did, what VG did there is the bounty hunter scouted the top rune and saw that there's no one uh, from the radiant side up there. So they, they knew that they were contesting the bottom rune, that the, uh, Malaysia was contesting the bottom rune, so uh, they ended up getting the free top rune instead. I wonder how long Dogface is going to sit here in the middle of the lane. He's, he's going to wait for the courier, isn't he? I feel like he's going to. Oh jeez. It's interesting. Rubik sitting here on the high ground, forcing out the invoker. Invoker shouldn't have too tough of a time. He is going Quaswex, by the way. Mm -hmm. This I... is just gonna help Mushi so much. Yeah, just the first PCS. Just always having a support tell Mushi is so nice, and he's getting up his souls. He actually missed a few of the yeah. last hits, which kind of sucks. But he's had like four free last hits and denies, and he's missed almost all of them. Has one soul so far. Yeah, that's that's tough. Maybe still adjusting to his mid lane role. Uh, Come against more of these veteran mid lanes. It's it's pretty tough, but dogfights, man. He wants it. He's clarity. He's committed. The mm, courier is gonna be coming soon. And when Spushi gets a couple more last hits, he's really delayed it. Like he's he's unknowingly to himself actually hurting dogfights a bit by not getting this bottle soon. <laughs> but yeah, here, here comes it comes. The bottle, so we're gonna follow the. Uh, that's not the shitty wizard. That who, who is that? I don't know who that is. No, he's gonna actually go in front of the tier two, tier three, oh, and he gets it. <laughs> Mushi, oh man, he's like, how long were you there? <laughs> Dog fights, he gets it. That's that's really an orthodox play. You would not see someone commit for a minute and a half. They would try to like time the ball at co bottle coming out, but he just sat there since the beginning of the game. Oh jeez. Yeah. Yep, that's really strange. Uh, usually with uh, a bounty hunter on the other team, uh, top teams like this should know that he's gonna be camping for it. <laughs> that's so weird well I mean the lanes are like 2 on one from the VGP side while you know you have dogfights just roaming around warding even blocking now the pull camp so I mean he can even block this it, it's perfect what play what a great bounty hunter he's just putting in so much work I see why VG picks him so early let's so see often. so only 21 times in 6.83 but now wow that's more than wow. doubled in 6.84. Okay, lots of bounty hunter. Track is just really value. Taking a look at the two offlaners, we have Ohio level 3. And on the other side, Yang just getting his level 3. So both of them are perfectly on par with each other. Yeah, nothing nothing you can really do to deny them too hard. Uh, there is the pull available for VGP, but they're not really going for it. And Also, they buffed the uh, Treance a little while ago, giving a little bit more base damage in dogfights. Yeah. They drop the sentry. They'll be able to kill off this ward. Is it in range? Oh, it's out. Oh, it's just barely out of range. This is the best time. It's like it's like it's wiggling around the range of it. It's like yeah, you can't see me. Jeez. That ward actually, I think that blocks the large camp as well. We'll see uh, with the stack. It's really close because it should be the magic bush. Yep. It's directly perpendicular, like parallel. Oh, so they block their own stacking. This is not going to be a good time for Mushi to recover. And I mean, do they have? Anything going on that's good? It's KYXY on the Juggernaut. He's farming up just fine, so nothing to really halt him back. And Ohio's been doing good. He's he's been doing much better than the Clockwork, nearly doubling him, and not really getting into any crazy situations. So this is what you want to see. Yeah, that's one of the things about not offlane nature's profit. You do need to get a couple CS with him. You need to get a, a better start than the offlane Clockwork. All Clockwork needs is levels. Once he gets that level six, he just goes around and killing people, and that's how he gets his money. Yeah, just the hook shots galore, and now Dogfight's gonna soak up some of this XP from this hard stack. This is gonna be so nice for him. Actually, he's harassing Mushi, keeping him from going for the stack, and that's so frustrating for him, but Razors are coming out. He goes back into the Ghost Walk, and hmm, he should be able to soak up some of this, or maybe even kill the Courier again? 
Uh oh. 150? No, he oh, missed he it. Doesn't have enough damage. Uh, okay. He and... doesn't manage to get the stack off. And, Mo and with Mushi just getting his bottle, his 8 CS to his name at 4 minutes, this is a really underfarmed Shadow Fiend. Yeah, and Lin's just having his way with the mid lane. So, I, I mean, my Malaysia will need first blood, I feel. <laughs> They're going to need a lot to come back into this already. Not saying that it's over just from the other game, but it's just being hindered so much with this bounty. Bounty Hunter hiding, trying to find the courier again. He's out of mana though, so I don't think he'll be able to get another chance at it. I don't know what he's planning on doing since he's out of mana. Um, he's got a ward, he's bought a TP, he's full bought up, and he's gonna die to the stack. Yeah, there he goes, that's a smart play by him. There you go, good. So, the four stack making quick work of him. That's gonna <sighs> technically be first blood, but not really. And they're like, okay, I guess he's just doing his own thing. And they check the stack too, Mushi's like, alright, I'm gonna finally be able to clear this now, and get one more. So, he'll get the uh, five stack, it seems, maybe? Well, he, he can't clear it. He needs at least level 5 and, like, several bottle cl bottle crows to get it. He does get the stack off. I guess he's just hoping on coming back later. But right now, he just he just can't do anything right now. Yeah, he's pretty poor. He only has 11 souls, too. He is definitely struggling right now. And still looking at the offlaners. Yang, level 4, Ohio. Actually, level 5, so he's got a minor advantage there. And do we see Null Tallies in the blade mail? Is this, is this the build for him today? I doubt I, it. I don't even know anymore. Like, uh, the Nature's Prophet role has changed so much throughout the year. Oh, going out mid. Nice. EMP on Amushi, cool cool snap. snap. He's going to lose his mana. He's still got a little bit of health here. He's going to get ticked down. No, he's going to be able to bottle charge. They turn this around. Dogfight's getting dragged to the tower. Malaysia get first blood. Lin still diving it up. He's got to run, but he's going to have the Wex and should be speedy enough to get out of here. They ping Ohio. He's like, get out of my way, Johnny. But can't find the Sprout, and okay, Malaysia do get that first blood, and down bot, we do actually have Yang with the Cogs, forcing them back, a chick Imba pretty low, Dogfights is going to be going out to him, KYXY is there to chop him down a little bit, we got ourselves a Courier going up top, but Yang, his salve gets cancelled, and look at this, KYXY is carrying them back, so Malaysia come out unscathed, and we find themselves with one kill. Yeah, that was a great recovery nice. kill for Malaysia. Wow. Pretty aggressive oh, play. Sentry going down to block the bounty hunter going into the jungle, but he still goes in there. Kaka, like Kaka. Just... <laughs> Kaka's on another team, alright? <laughs> there, KOX, I said it good. I'm glad I'm not the only one who got that. <laughs> HTT Kaka. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're having fun on the land. But yeah, the, the, the lag was noticeable from my end, too. I don't know if yours was lagging either, but we gotta get the pause real quick. BGP Kaka. Oh, jeez. Confirms. <laughs> Alright, they're ready to go. Like has subsided. So yeah, Bounty Hunter is still level one at six minutes. This is this is kinda sad that he, uh, because they didn't get that mid kill, they were really focusing on getting the Shadow Fiend. And if you th if that would have happened, he would have gotten about level three, maybe two and a half. But it, he would have been well on his way to level six. But now being level one, he's just basically a scout. I don't know. It's, He's a moving mobile ward for now until he gets sentried and then just gets destroyed immediately. <laughs> and he becomes gold. Yeah, it's still there. I just want to type in all chat how, how newbie, how Vici. There's nothing but uh okay. I mean we can still take a look at the lanes like the gyro is catching up to the jugger not and uh, item wise they're gonna see the gyro go for the phase boots and. Uh, Aquila builds, and this should be just the max flat cannon, max rocket barrage, and S and Y kind of just chase you down all day build, and for the Juggernaut, looking kind of like the same. And yeah, the popularity of Gyrocopter is obviously notable with how many games have been played in competitive already, and he's just played insanely, insanely a lot. Yeah, Gyro's always been my one of my favorite carries to go to. Uh, this it's, it's going to be really interesting to see what these uh, these Chinese people go for. I mean, you can usually see the quick BKB by a lot of North American and Europe teams, but then there's also the times where they just skip BKB Radiant's entirely. True. So it's going to be interesting to see how early, late, or whether or not he just doesn't get it. This could be a good early BKB game, especially against Lashrak and Rubik. You know, you're just going to be able to run at them and melt them down. But Dogfight's still level 1, looking for something. They're even dropping deep... Safe words. So oh. 
Oh, KYXY. He's gonna get Hex, and he's gonna drop, so they trade one for one. Ended up almost missing that kill. But he did take up the clockwork with him. And now Kajik Imba getting cut off. Dogfights, do you have enough damage? He's level one. Ah, uh, the Orb of Venom might get him this kill. There's Split Earth and the Lightning Storm, but. I think he'll be okay. Sunstrike? Is there any points in Wex? No. no. Uh, not Wex, Exhort. <laughs> That'd be pretty so, nifty. Yeah. Here, here he is, uh, Mushi taking out his stack. He's finally getting up in levels. Level 6. He has Rubik able to Fade Bolt if needed. Actually, just probably protect, protecting him and getting levels. Oh my, level 5 on Rubik here. Yep, level 7 dinged out there just for Mushi too. So, they're, they're going to both enjoy that quite a bit. And the Bounty Hunter still dogfights, not giving up. Not even going to go farm up a little bit. Just level 1 sitting there. He pings out Johnny at least, so he's gonna give a little bit of information to Yang, but I mean, he, he can't do anything. Usually you'll see some of the Shuriken points coming out there, he'll be able to dish out a little bit of burst damage, but he's just useless. Yeah, he really needed to uh, take the experience from the stack that SF just did, but he wasn't in time. Haste. Yeah, just, so. That's one thing that he needed to continue doing. <laughs> Haste it up Invoker, going for hunting, he's looking for a kill, maybe to get Kachikimba. Yeah, it didn't look like he walked through any words, so this shouldn't be known. No. Should be an easy kill on Kichikimba. Okay, we got ourselves a tornado that actually misses, and he's like, this is too awkward, I can't do it. <laughs> he really doesn't want to get uh, Omni Slash right here. Nope. TP from Rubik. It may only be three slashes, but it still hurts quite a bit. So they smoke up, and actually that's just James's smoke, so they want to go in three on three, but they don't know about the support of TPs that came in with uh, Johnny. So they'll push in, the smoke's gonna break, they spot out Johnny, and they're coming from the flank. Can they get this one off? They end up hexing up Johnny, they're gonna spike him and take the right clicks for the kill. And now KYXY, he's gonna turn, he's looking for the Omni Slash, can he get it out? Nope, just gonna spin, the call down's there, slowing them down just a little bit. Kachik Imba, gonna be able to sprint away. Well, KYXY still slowed down, they missed the split earth. Can I throw out the spikes? Max range, connects out of KYXY. The damage is still there, Yang, hook shot, can he line it up? He connects out of KYXY from downtown, gets the cogs, KYXY's dead. Solid hook shot from Yang. Great fight from BGP. Wow. So yeah, all five heroes rotating, and that's uh, Malaysia just can't do that right now with Nature's Prophet and Shadowfiend being so underfarmed and under leveled, and basically not very useful at this level. They just no. like can't fight. It's just they're they're more more so built to the late game, ready to rat, and uh, kind of just delay the game for now. And. It's, VGP, they want to push it. They want to push that 10 to like 20 minute point where they can really just run at you and snowball off that. But tier one's gonna get pressured up top. Mushi's still farming up the jungle a bit, and I mean it's just it's just a waiting game. He's still got some stacks too to clear, which is nice, but it's, it's gonna be tough. Yeah, Mushi is definitely catching back up from his awful start. From his ACS at eight, uh, four minutes, he's almost top the net worth after this stack, which he isn't going to take actually. And just wait for another stack. Oh. Lin is demonstrating no fear. He's like, I'm just gonna throw a tornado whenever I want. Screw it. Whatever, man. And the build, too, for Mushi is gonna be the mech. So he'll be able to uh, push it out a little bit soon. Uh, he's got a couple more gold till he gets that up. I wonder how this mech is gonna work uh, with a 20 second longer cooldown from 6.8C. 6.84C. Uh, I haven't really seen a Shadowfiend mech game, which, I mean, it hasn't been that long since the, the new patch, but I wonder how this is gonna work. We actually saw a Shadowfiend mech uh, the other night in the uh, Chinese scene, so there's still teams that are doing it, Oops, and uh, some teams are still doing Yule's mech, so they're uh, copying a little bit of the NA Dota, so we'll see what Mushi wants to do. Blink Dagger's still not out of the ordinary either, and Ohio does have his hand of Midas, so he'll be, he'll be looking to delay this farm as long as possible. But there it is, Mushi top the net worth after to the start he had. Yes, no surprise. It's, it's Shadowfiend, man. No matter how far you put him back, he can always always just come back. It's just really dumb, but tier 1 up top. Got ourselves a, a little siege coming in, and we should be able to see this go down. And Ohio's even taking a little bit of flak from the flak cannon, so... XLL just abusing the gyrocopter. Oh, they found the bounty hunter, but they dropped their dust? That was weird. There's dust on the floor for a second. Uh, I don't... Who has it? Oh, KYXY has it. Okay. <laughs> He's faster, he can actually catch up to him. I, th I, I think that's the reason why. Just because he has the phase boots, why not just give him the dust? And they want to commit for this tier 1 tower up top. It's at 125, and VGP don't want to just flat up deny it. They're trying to bait it. They're trying to use it with the uh, glyph. Yang bottom looking for Lashrak, but Lashrak backs up very, very wisely. Yeah, don't want to run into a hookshot. You're, you're easy food for a uh, clockwork at this point, so. We got the tree ants out, and we got a tier 1 taking damage. Fort's there, TP's out. They force one TP. 
And dogfight level four, so he's actually got some damage and he's got actually got some health. But the Treants, they take the tower down. PGP just can't uh, can't get the deny, it seems. I wonder if Clockwork just didn't realize that the tower was really low, because he was standing right next to it and didn't deny it. Or if he just was really afraid of a Rubik lift into many stuns. I mean, that's weird. But on the other side, Ohio gets the deny, and pings are coming out as they spot out Johnny. Level 6, too, so... This is a good level for him to be at right now, and there's some solid spells for him to steal. The finger's up, but uh-oh, James, not gonna give him a chance to do it. Got ourselves a hex, got a spike, they don't even need it. Use the finger, so... Right clicks come in, a little bit of help from the rocket flare, and James gets the last hit. There you go. That's that's using the bounty hunter to efficiency. <laughs> definitely, he's definitely he's catching up in levels too. I was thinking like an 18 minute level six maybe, but looks like he's gonna get down to 15 minutes maybe. Oh, double TP bottom. Let's see what do we got. Hook shots. That tree at micro coming in from Ohio, stopping that one in its tracks, and now a tornado coming in. But a great spin from KYXY, so they just immediately decide to back off. Almost, almost very close to seeing a lot of bloody bloody initiations. And then dogfights just sitting mid. He's got no mana, so he's not really too reliable here. He can just get the right click in, but Lin drops the EMP, gonna zone him away. Cold Snap comes out. Mushi's gonna lose a lot of his mana here. Right click's doing quite a bit with those Cold Snap procs. Dropping the call down as well on top, but everybody gets out of range in time, and it's actually stolen. Nice hook shock to come in from Yang with the cogs, keeping Mushi stuck. They telekinese him out, so the Requiem actually does not that much damage. And then Johnny drops, but the right clicks are enough for Mushi to get Yang, and they pick up a kill on the Invoker too. So that's going to be a three for one. Malaysia took it a huge fight. And a pause. <laughs> <laughs> so in that fight, the EMP burned most of Mushi's mana, but he still had enough to where he could wand mech and then have enough for Requiem. So he had he had a lot of HP, like, just burst. Uh, so they couldn't kill him, and then he used the Requiem to turn it around as, as well as several raises. Was yeah, the, a great call by Mushi saying that he can turn it. Those raises were on par, or on point from uh, Mushi at that point. And also, Ohio's uh, Nature's Wrath just went through everybody. Like, that destroyed the rest of the HP. You can see him picking up, uh, I believe it was one kill at least with it. Uh, yeah, he picked up one. Did he? Yes. No, he just dc Just kidding, I can't see it. I can't scroll up! No! Oh, well. It's fine. But, it's good K combination. KYXY, bottom, getting the bottom tier one. So, that, that's another really cool thing about that fight middle, is that they did that with was that three, maybe four heroes? I, don't, I think Rubik was in there and just got blown up. Yeah. So yeah, there's it was only four heroes and KYXY, the person that you would think would need to be in the fight with his Omni Slash, just wasn't there and is going to be able to get a tier one. It's a good trade, very good trade for them, and we'll probably see the graph kind of kind of spike it back up even more as Malaysia already three thousand gold ahead and it's about two thousand XP. So, not saying it's over, but just saying that you know it's it's come back potential still for VGP. And that's going to be the last set of tier 1s, so KYXY is going to chop that one out. And did he finish his Mask of Madness? I believe he did. Oh no. Is it coming to him? Yeah, it's coming to him. Never mind. It's on the Courier. What else? What else item-wise are we going to see that's going to be different? Maybe Ohio will get the Ags. Who knows? A little tree all over the place. Well, let's see. Malaysia have picked the SF six times. Okay, and they're 5 and 1 with it. Not bad. Cool. Yeah. 370 last. It's average. That's good. That seems well, that's, a little that's low. That's high. Is it high? That's, that's really high for 6.84, the death ball meta. Like, you just see games ending in 25 minutes, 25, 30 minutes for 370 CS. That's, I would say that's really, really high. Uh, I mean, if you look at, like, past games where almost every game used to go to 60 minutes. Yeah, true. Uh, with SFs, so, like, they used to get, what, 600 to 1,000 CS. But uh, but in this meta, I'd say that's, that's amazing. Okay. And Ush is another person that I was watching today. He was playing a lot of SF too, and he was managing to uh, break that record pretty easily. So, not bad for Mushi. And apparently, it's going to be a long pause. I'm not. I'm not too sure. A little bit of lag on the servers or something, but I'll, I'll maybe unpause their Chinese stream and see if they're talking about anything else. <laughs> yeah, apparently the players are out of the booths too. So. Oh no. Uh, yeah. Well, I can put that up on the stream. Uh, no, only actually only uh, only Malaysia out of the booth. That's weird. Well, oh, well. we'll wait for them to come back in, I guess, and just keep uh, keep talking for a bit. Yeah, I wonder if uh, maybe the Nature's Prophet computer just died, and then they're going to the bathroom or something. <laughs> I don't know. Take a quick break already. Why not? Thirteen minutes in. <laughs> so two hundred ninety is the uh, average. Not bad. Woo. <laughs> 
I wonder how many times have VGP sniped out a courier. That's that's the real thing. Like, how long has uh, just <laughs> dogfights been camp in mid lane? How has many it, games? How many games? How long? Average time waited for courier <laughs> for said courier, <laughs> probably a minute and a half. But yeah, so we're gonna see Malaysia get a lot of traction with this early Roche potential is there, so. There's plenty of things for them to still do, and Ohio still farming with a hand of minus, and 2,100 more gold, so... I could see a Necro game, actually, out of him, too. Necro 3 would just demolish the VGP side and just make Dogfight's life even harder. Yeah, it's a, it's a really strong item before the Gyro gets his BKB, because you just send it at him. He can't really kill the... he can't flat cannon, he can't... He can't stand there and fight versus them, so... That would be a really good pick, uh, considering how weak the Gyrocopter is. Uh, you could also split push, but... Could. I feel like he needs to be in fights for a little bit. I think his fighting potential is still there, and there you go. He's back. Yay, Yay he's back. <laughs> so, uh, XLL, he's got 700 gold on this gyro, and I mean, he's, he's got a long ways to go till his BKB's up, and alright. We do see the tower going down. KYXY gets that one, no problem. He gets the last hit, so he's got Mask of Madness and Manta, Manta build, possibly, into Scotty. I would think SNY there isn't many things to purge in this game. And SNY has just been such a huge pickup for every hero in 6.83, and it's still pretty good in 6.84. They didn't nerf it, they just buffed a lot of other items. Oh, well, maybe he's going to go for the uh, Battle Fury. He picked up the hatchet. Oh. Ever since they added that to the recipe. Now you can cut down trees. It's so good. <laughs> Battle Fury is just such a great item now. So yeah, looking at the overall game state right now, uh, Malaysia's got two more towers, and they've got the heroes to really abuse it with Juggernaut, Treon, or Nature's, Pro Nature's Prophet, and uh, and the SF. I feel like they're going to be utilizing the map a lot more, and it's up to VGP to do something with smokes, and just outrage, just go and find people and kill them. Oh. I feel like that's their only way to get back into this game, they can't really out-farm them anymore. VGP only have one more smoke left, and Kitchik Imba just picked up a smoke, so... Oh. We could see Malaysia kind of kind of go for an aggro play here. I believe it's actually flying out. Yeah, it's flying out. They're going to go for, I guess, a, a two-man smoke play? Maybe? Or just clear out the stack and then kind of gather everybody up. But Mushi misses the stack, and the smoke is going to come out. So what are they going to do? Silly Mushi, you got to pull it to the left. <laughs> just, just barely missing it. <laughs> but all right, they're lined up. Lot. A lot of heroes gathered up into the bottom lane. Maybe just baiting the Juggernaut? No, they're just gonna outright push. The best I don't thing, think though, this is necessary. You don't think it's necessary, really? I mean, just no, keep pressuring can, it. Yeah, they yeah they can have the Nature's Prophet go top and just out farm them. But with VGP smoked up, they're gonna do a wraparound gank here. And flat cannon actually is used, so there's not much clear left. But the flank, like you said, is coming. Lin, he's dusted. James as well with Yang behind. This is gonna be the ultimate pinch attack if they can execute this completely uh, correctly. Or it could turn horrifically wrong. We got Ohio going to be the first one to get jumped on. We can see the smoke break. Hookshot connects. Tornado out. EMP only going to hit one with that tornado. And Ohio gets four staffed away. So he actually avoids a lot of the damage. The call down's there. Turns around with the Nature's Wrath and gets so much damage out. KYXY though. He's going to drop with the Rubik and the Nature's Prophet. Mushi getting chased down by that rocket. And now they're going to track and chase. Chick Imba is going to be a very prime target for them to get. Bouncing off that shuriken and he pops the stick. And the missile's going to connect to Namushi. They chase down with the Rocket Barrage. They even force a buyback out of KYXY. Those cogs being perfect and stopping him from advancing forward. So we see ourselves with a 4 for 1 in the VGP favor. That was a phenomenal flank. And they get 30, They get 3,800 gold out of that. Wow. That's a huge change. They were, I, would, I, would, I was considering them pretty far behind uh, based off the draft and the way the game was flowing. But... With the with Malaysia's decision to group up, that smoke wraparound was just absolutely phenomenal. They're going back. Oh wow, Malaysia's going back to this one tower. They that, really want it. That's weird. <laughs> I mean, they still have ultis, so why not? But uh, the defense and the pinch could come out again. They didn't ward it or anything, so I mean, they may be setting themselves up for disaster. Yeah, five seconds on Clockwork Hook. Call downs back up. Finger. The only thing down is finger. But uh, it looks like they're not in position after that fight. They didn't go heal fast enough. Well, Link could still throw out an EMP Tornado here. He's got Cold Snap, too, so Tornado connects. Gets the EMP out, too. Gonna drain a lot of the mana. Mushi, no, the Force Staff saves him again. They get a steal on the Rocket Barrage there for Johnny, but he's stuck in the tree line, so we got Hook. Do we have anything to connect here? He's gonna run him down. Oh, Drum Charge out. Yep, found Johnny completely, but he gets pushed out of the cogs. Oh, no. And then the Requiem of the Souls of the Lags hit. Oh, oh no. <laughs> Ka. <laughs> 
Con! <laughs> but that's uh, a very untimely time to pause, and maybe it's just one of those days where the servers are going to lag pretty hard. Maybe there's a patch coming, who knows? Tier 2 Immortals for the uh, Compendium, I'm ready! Right. So yeah, in the last two fights, the Rubik, has, well, this fight and the last fight on this bottom tower, the Rubik has just gotten caught out instantly, and he's died both times. It's like they need a lift. They need some type of like control in this fight. Like the Strax having a hard time landing his stuns. They, they and they don't really have anything else other than that. So him going down so fast is just gonna. I don't know. It's it's basically a one team fight. Well, but let's we'll see. see how it goes from here. Requiem is gonna actually not come out. Did it come out? I believe it did. Oh, it's still there. <laughs> Jeez. Well, this is where I wish I could speak Chinese and could interpret, but I can't. So, uh, I mean, it seems that VGP are kind of backing off. Almost all of them are affected by Requiem. I believe three of them are. Yeah, three of them are. Last year's just the presence of the Dark Lord. Just kidding. Yeah. Uh, they were hit by it, though. It's it's still up. I think it's still up, right? Is it? Yeah, I thought it canceled. I thought it canceled. Oh, that's a spike. Just kidding. James actually interrupted it, so we got oh, some time yeah, to talk right. about this. Some Jan Madden. I wish I could draw. Actually, I can draw. I just don't know the key. Uh, I never use that mechanic. <laughs> So. Yeah, let's talk about this four staff from Nature's Prophet. It's been huge in these last fights. Oh, not that huge because they lost the last fight, but he's been able to four staff Mushi out this fight, uh, keeping all of his mana enough for Mech and Wan. Like he's he's got a lot of burst heal, so this fight's actually pretty scary for VGP to take. With they can't really burst the SF. There's no finger for 70 seconds. Calldowns down. Uh, not much mana. So yeah, I I think VGP need to just just hightail it out of there. Mm, so they should back off. James might be one of the casualties. I believe Sprout's going to be in range. So we got to watch out for that. And KYXY still has his Omni Slash available. So he'll be he'll be able to phase boot and run in once it's off cooldown with his Mask of Madness, which isn't on cooldown. And so what else? I mean, Yang is still stuck in a really precarious spot because the Tree Ants are actually blocking him into his own cogs. So he can't get out of there. I mean, they, they got to be having a field day on the Malaysia side. Like, oh, look at this. We can get this kill. We can get this kill. <laughs> and then we just get the tower. I wonder how this is gonna happen. Like, I think, I think that the clockwork can get out, but all of his spells are basically on cooldown except for hook. Like, maybe once his cogs run out, he can run to the left and then hook back to his team. I wish or, there was a timer on the cogs. Yeah, jeez. It's what it, it's been three seconds and it's a five second duration, so probably one and a half seconds left. All right, and Kajik Imba, he's got actually the storm up too. He actually maxed out on support, which is really good. That slow is so solid, seventy-five percent too, and it's what on a six-second cooldown, I believe. Uh, four. Four second. Oh, jeez. Well, I mean, we gotta wait for the delays. I'm gonna go back to looking at the Chinese stream, see what what's happening over there. And oh, they're saying go. Oh, okay, never mind. Just getting Chinese stream. I'm gonna pause <laughs> you. And what kills do we got? You see Yang stuck on the side. James is gonna take a bunch of damage there from the Nature's Wrath. Yang actually eating quite a bit there from. The Requiem, and then KYX by looking for the Omni, he just can't get it off right now. He's tracked up, he's slowed down by the Ghost Walk-ins. Oh. Everyone just gets out of there. Jeez. Well, they have plenty of time to discuss how to do that, but the Tier 2 goes down. Bottom tower has fallen. Yeah, so the, the Clockwork is actually a mid-hook animation uh, in the pause. So right when right when the game ended or started again, the hook in instantly went off. And he just it was able to skirt out of there. Jeez, all right. Well, close fight, I guess to say the least, but uh, after that last flank, the, the graph kind of stabilized a little bit, 2,500 plus, and then Malaysia have like less than 2K XP lead, so like I said, can come back at any point in dogfights as a DD, but just really can't use it, sadly. Uh, you're not taking out an ancient stack, only one stack, just a little bit of farm before they decide to fight again. He just needs those levels. He's uh, it kind of feels like he's a little under leveled right now. Yeah, level ten. Uh, his level eleven's been hindered quite a bit. They've what? been five manning a lot, and they haven't really been winning the fights. They got one kill that last fight and lost the one before. Mm -hmm. So, gyrocopter almost getting to level twelve before Juggernaut even gets to level eleven. Smoke up, uh, Malaysia. Aggressive. So let's see what they can find if they choose to go the correct way. That is. Or maybe even get a bait with other teammates. I would, I would just put Mushi in mid and just let them sit behind him. And Ohio's even going to try to TP in with a Sprout. I don't know, Sprout. <laughs> just TP in anyway. They drop Dust too. Oh, it actually connected into Lin. They're looking for it. They pop a second Dust too, looking for him again. But he ran, he ran to the left side, so he was able to get out. Here the push is starting. Do they have backdoor disabled? Yeah, they do. Creeps must have just died. So healing ward, they shouldn't... 
I don't know. This fight's going to be really interesting. I don't know who is favored in this. Healing word still. Oh, he stole track. Oh, Johnny stole track, but he's only going to use one. He's stuck in the cogs. The tornado's actually connected. They finger down Johnny. Mushi popping his BKB and the zoning Requiem to come out. And then Yang gets Omni slashed down. So we got tracks still coming in from dogfights. Nature's Wrath doing quite a bit of damage. And Lin looking to maybe reinitiate here. His tornado's going to be up in 15, though. So they go for the one for one uh, trade there, but that's a better trade for Malaysia. Actually, no. Wow. The rubric is worth more than the clockwork. <laughs> huh. That's because of the track. That's why. Yeah. There, there you go. Uh, that, that makes a lot more sense. Uh, but yeah, I, I still think it was more favorable, even though the gold says different. I think it was more favorable to kill the, the clockwork, keep his items down. He's not even close to a four staff anymore. And like, he needs a four staff this game too to get away from the SF to get people away from the SF. Yeah. But Gotta again, get him the third fight in a row where the Rubik just instantly exploded. It sucks, man. He's, he's he just gets fingered down. That's it. <laughs> like there's nothing you can do about it. So unless he gets his own BKB, which won't be for some time, he's he's gonna be struggling. And uh, speaking of BKBs, XLL is gonna pick up his. So that's gonna be his immediate first item to get. And TPs are coming into this mid lane, it seems. Ohio's gonna come in, he's gonna drop himself to Treants in a second. And this is taking so much damage. Look at that, the Edict's putting work in and it's gonna go down. Nothing VGP could do. Hook, hook. He's looking. Do uh, we have hooks? The left. Uh, nope. And dogfights with uh, Lin have just been walking around invisible together, trying to trying to find any kind of initiation they can, but they just can't. Yeah, Ninja's Prophet's build, Midas, Force, Treads, and then I think that's a Mjolnir, or Maelstrom? Mmm, you feeling the Maelstrom? Maybe. Maybe Deso? So. Deso wouldn't I, be too bad. Ooh, Deso would actually be really interesting with their heroes. I, I could, I would dig it. Oh, four staff picked up, oh, the recipe must have been on the career. For the Clockwork. Oh, the Clockwork's four staff? Okay, I was like, who's four staff is that? <laughs> but. He he does have a quicker force staff. He he really needs one. Dyer's top tower for safety and for offense. But James can't defend this tier two up top, and right now it's getting pressured again. The edict coming out. Kachik Imba going in with the Triansens. It's just gonna fall. They don't have the fortification up, and there you go. That's the last of the tier twos. Malaysia have been so good with pushing right now. They've only lost one tier one up top, and uh oh, they just ping him out. And also they're dropping the dust too. These preemptive dust, man. Just. They're so Still worried. Sometimes. And Mushi's gonna check the high ground. He actually just goes forward? He's not afraid? He's got a haste and his BKB up. He wants to fight. Lin. Not gonna go for it. There's all these pings, too. The scary part for VGP is they haven't really been farming any of the map. They've just been... They've been trying to defend towers without actually, like, forcing the defense. So they'll gather five people at a tower and then just not defend it. So instead of, like, getting something else done, maybe trading a little bit of farm for a tower, they'll just not do anything for a tower. So they're falling really far behind in this game. And the deep ward, too, coming out. Not going to get deep warded. They, they try to check the high ground. They try to check their entrance to the, the jungle. And, oh, man, that's just so much information that's going to be gathered from Malaysia. They do see that one, the one on the high ground but they oh there's two wards on there no that's a treon just kidding that looks <laughs> like a ward <laughs> it could look like a ward i guess but uh yeah it, same thing still applies and dogfights hasn't been able to do as much as he would like to this game he had high hopes in the start of it but never found a lane or never found farm so he's still lacking quite a bit in the item department and kachik imba he's got himself a point booster oh look at this look at this invoker he's he's skirting Skirting the edges here. He's gonna break their smoke if they keep going forward. And smoke breaks, dust, dust, immediate. They get the telekinesis oh, with the Omni Slash and even Papa Requiem. That's some serious invoker hate. And that should turn into uh, an easy Aegis. With the DD. Okay. Ghost walk up. We got a hook shot to connect it onto Mushi, but he's gonna get pushed out of the pit. Got the call down on top. Mushi's right clicks hurting quite a bit more with that BK, uh, the DD. So, they back up, they give each other respect for now, and Lin wants to go in. He pops himself, that Orchid, no Tornado comes out, no EMP. They trap up dogfights and drop the raises, there's the EMP. That's going to take away so much of the mana, and now, Team Malaysia can't really fight it. The Ghost Walk, though, from Johnny, throwing them for a loop and slowing them down. Interesting. Forcing out the Invoker's buyback and then running. BKB did get popped, but 
Just two people who can't kill each other were fighting each other with the gyro versus the SF. Unstoppable force and an immovable object. object. So, Roche still stands, Aegis will be there, and VGP have no real intention of going for it. They, they need to get some towers, they gotta really equalize this gold and map pressure. So we'll, we'll see what they can do. Pushing up, Arcanes, uh, Tornado. It's an KY Expo, a little bit of poke there. And again, nothing gonna be found out of this. And they s actually are gonna TP in Ohio, does he see him? Drops the dust, drops the sprout. Look at this, man. Dogfights, he's gonna drop. Raises and Mushi gets the last hit. Jeez. So I'm curious as to why they didn't wanna fight there. All of the cooldowns from Malaysia were on cooldown. There was no BKB, there was no Requiem, no Omni Slash. They just decided not to take that fight. And they're gonna lose Rush because of it. Because of that pick off on Gondar. Maybe they'll lose Roche. Actually, they, they sh VGP should lose Roche, but they could try to fight for it. Who knows what they want to do right now? And yep, they scouted out. Johnny still ghost walked, but it's like I'm getting a little bit of lag. Yeah, same for me. It's just the server. I think the players are just dealing with it at this point. But uh, yeah. Maybe a hook in. Nah, he can't do it. No. Ooh. Yeah, the tree on scouting has been pretty nice from Ohio this game. He's been scouting, trying to block hooks, and just overall being a wonderful profit player. Yeah, so I saw a couple of them in the enemy jungle, but just thought nothing of it. But that's a, a great note. I'll take that as tribute. <laughs> They're just all over the place at this point. So, Mushi Invis right now, maybe looking to fight. Lin backing up, though, playing it smart. And this, this game, the momentum, everything is just in the control of Malaysia. They're making VGP kind of play into them. And now with this Aegis, they should try to pressure uh, potential high ground here. So yeah, one of the things to really note upon uh, this game is that there's a Nietzsche's Prophet in it. And the top lane, no, nothing has been happening in the top lane besides the towers being taken down. There hasn't really been much farm, there hasn't been much pressure. It's, like The Prophet's been fighting, this is really, I, I, again, a different way of seeing Nature's Prophet. <laughs> I don't mind a uh, team fighty kind of kind of profit coming into the fights and not just committing to to the rat style, but eh. oh well, he's he's doing pretty well with the and he did it for the maelstrom Mjolnir actually out very soon, of the so he'll have a huge amount of output damage and even the uh, the shield to come out too that static shield. So what do you think this gloves of haste for invoker is gonna be? Do you think it's gonna be a uh, I mean recovery minus? <laughs> Uh, 27 minute Midas? So. Yeah, why not? <laughs> uh, maybe, I think it, I think their idea is that with Gyro, they'll be able to defend the high ground. I mean, if if, if he was thinking about a Midas, but they could Radiant's defend the high ground indefinitely. So maybe, it, maybe it's a choice, but I, I'm, I've seen Invokers go Maelstrom. I just think a BKB would be better this game. Yeah, the BKB would help out so much, but he doesn't really have the time to get it. More the uh, amount of room to farm to get that, but TP's coming in, they're going for the mid push, DD on Mushi, so this is the rune to have, second one for him to get this game, and it's perfect timing, they force the fortification, so that'll keep him back for a little bit, shuriken to bounce, does a decent amount of chunk, but they can heal back up no problem. And this tier 3 should be going down, I mean Mushi could just re-go back up to the high ground, KYXY's there too, but he's been doing his own thing up top. And they're doing a great job of controlling the waves. Like, again, send Ohio back. He'll just TP back in himself. And rinse and repeat the process. And now a BKB up two for the Juggernaut. So if his spin wasn't good enough, now he has a BKB. And uh, he'll be he'll be magic immune, for, magic immune for a whole long while. Yep. That's actually the first time I've seen a Juggernaut just leave it as a Yasha. They feels always weird. They always to go SNY or Manta, but BKB... Yeah, it feels really weird to see a BKB rushed instead of like Manta than going for Basher or something, but alright. Aegis is not a bad choice at all. No, not at all. Smoke coming in from VGP. Aegis is gonna expire in a minute fifty, and they wanna try to gank out Ohio, but they're not gonna find anything. This is this is a valiant effort with the smoke, but they're on opposite sides of the map right now. Yeah, way too obvious. The as uh, LPQ said, the the tree on scouts, he's just looking, he sees no one on the map. They get, they have to know they they do know something's up. They're also yeah. smoke themselves. They circled the whole area. Malaysia's gonna be going to push. Oh, he max healing ward. Huh. I guess more push potential, and one point the crit's not too bad with two points in spin. And yeah. 
I mean, I always theory craft and I always thought that. Oh, bottom. Dog fight. We got a sprout coming in. Nope, not going to connect on anything. They're looking for this bounty hunter. They drop the wards. Do they see him? Oh, they blink forward. They pop the requiem. Oh, jeez, the mind games. Dog fights. Little does he know, Mushi's right on top of him. Or little does Mushi know, he's right on top of dog fights. Following him. He's leading his trail, and now Mushi might be in some trouble. Track comes in. Lin's gonna chase it down, but no, blinked away. Okay. What? Tier three down bot. Look at this. Diabolic edict. Damage coming in from KYXY, and it should fall. But spikes coming out to two. We got some serious damage with the call down, as well as the flat cannon. Nice four step to keep Kachik Imba a safe and away. They get themselves the EMP and tornado combination. Johnny taking a lot. He's silenced. He's not gonna take down though from the cold snap. So he'll be a okay to get bottled back up. And now with fort down, I see a Rax potentially out of this from Malaysia. They don't have a healing ward, they don't have a mech, so this is going to be interesting to see how they go about this. Sprout on it, what? Look That's up. just a zoning sprout, yeah. He can't do anything in the fight, lag is here, but Omni Slash with BKB is out from KYX while he ends up on the Invoker, and then they are going to get killed until James and the Lion, so Rax should be dead, Yang and Lin stuck in one sprout, nothing they could do about that, a little bit of a zoning rocket, and the Rax actually stays alive for a little bit here. Malaysia not looking to overextend, and they're gonna play it just safe, seeing as how they just lost the Aegis. So, I don't, you don't see this often, but a maxed out Sprout from Nature's Prophet, as well as the buff from the recent patch. That was a six second on the sideline for the Gyrocopter. You couldn't do anything. He would have freely hit the Rax. Yeah. Had he had maybe a hatchet just value there, but he did not. And it's just stuck, stuck in the trees. So, we got a Rax that took a bunch of damage, but that'll heal back up. Had they focused the range racks, they could have got it, but just trying to play in the heat of the moment, it seems. And BKB is now up for Ohio. I mean, he got pretty farmed. He's keeping up with the SF somewhat. And what is Mushi going for next? No idea. Track on to the nation's profit. Nothing should come of it. Mm -hmm. The list track is a blood zone? Jeez. Yeah, Kajikimba's been finding some serious farm. He's 1 1 and 7 with 74 last hits, so. He's gotten some tower kills on top, and this Bloodstone is such a value item for him to have right now. Got it around 30 minutes. Oh, he's been sitting on it for a little bit, not too long. Well, he only has one death this game. In a 30 minute game with a Lashrak versus a, a Bounty Hunter, a Lion, an Orchid Invoker, that's crazy. And what are you doing, dogfights? Yeah, I was actually really afraid this game for for the Lishrak. He seemed to be food, or he seemed to, he could have been food this game, just wasn't. No, he played it very smartly. He was able to get out, and early four staff pickup too was just so helpful. Mm -hmm. But now we're seeing the uh, wonderful fruits of his labor. Able to pick up the bloodstone and just be almost unkillable himself. And KYXY, his Omni Slash in that last fight too, while well, they were trying to break the base, helped out a ton. And I don't, I don't really see VGP being able to kind of leave their base at this point it seems impossible the jungle's been fully cleared out too KYXY making mint speed of that one and then Mushi just covering his own jungle and Ohio on top of that so just solid solid control from the Malaysia side showing that uh, veteran experience and now they have 14,000 gold in terms of the lead and then 12,000 in terms of the XP so here comes the uh, let's let's have all three cores sit on each of the lanes and just push it out consistently or well, whenever they have a chance and then you see the gyro taking up all the farm for the dire team and it's the three cores versus the one super farmed core even though the super farmed core is he's not that farmed yeah <laughs> <laughs> he may be 304 with 240 last hits but that's that's not near enough to defeat the shadow feed at this point when he went manta yeah why'd he go manta i guess might beat be them with an illusion later on who knows <laughs> Yeah, Manta as well for the Juggernaut ult, and the maybe he can get out a Sprout with it, but don't like the pickup too much for an extra 3,000 gold. Oh, and like Yang. He's gonna get TP'd on. We got a Sprout. He's gonna try to hook shot out. Oh no! What did he hit? Did he hit him with his Omni? Yeah, he hit the Omni slash Juggernaut. That, that's not something you see every day. That's okay. Well, there you go. Another counter to the clockwork. Add it to the list. You Omni slash him, he can't get out. <laughs> and that's gonna be. Tower and maybe a sweep of the bot racks. Never mind, they're just gonna go for the bot racks instead. Mushi having another timely DD. Doesn't get any better for him. 
Jeez, so uh, this Rax is gonna melt. They get the hex, they get the spikes, but there's no real damage. Blinking forward, BKB's out for Mushi. He channels out the Rucky, but does a ton of damage with it. XLL does pop his own BKB. Yang getting the four staff, getting the cogs, trying to give revenge to KYX, but he just sustains through with the ward. He's dominating at this point, and now it's gonna be turned into a second kill. XLL cannot TP back out. Even though he was in his own base, and that's gonna be a double kill for KYXY, and more than likely looking like game. Yeah, no buyback from the gyrocopter. 60 seconds on the sideline. Yeah, nothing they can do. Sprouts, treants, everything galore. Base is just falling rapidly. Buybacks. I mean, I have to look at them at this point. There is nothing for the VGP <laughs> side, and there's a casual finger dropped out there from uh, James. Surprised it wasn't stolen, but GG's called. There you go. And that's uh, game one of this best of three to Malaysia, taking it over uh, VG Gaming prospects. Or potential. Oh my god. But yeah, I'm your caster, or we're your casters in uh, EGAD and Ryanu. And on stats was LPQ. So you can check them all, all out there. And uh, follow me on the summit, Twitch, Twitter, and Facebook. And the likes. We got the second game of this best of three coming up soon. Enjoy the music. Enjoy the uh, Chinese stream that I'm going to play while you guys can watch the players and such. And uh, we'll see you for that game ASAP.